Hey there folks, Santee at the Arizona Ghost Riders here. I'm here with Josh Willis from Arbuckles Coffee. Thanks Santee, morning. Today we're gonna to talk about a good friend of his, Don Collier. We're gonna give him a little tribute. Those of you who don't know about him, you're gonna find out. So Josh, how did you meet Don Collier? I mean, how did that happen? So I originally met Don uh, in the spring of 2007, and it was at a Western festival up in Chandler at a place called Rawhide. And we had an Arbuckle booth there serving coffee. And Don was there with a lot of his fellow actors. For the longest time, I wanted his voice to do something, some sort of voice work, or be the Arbuckle cowboy. So when I finally got to meet him, he was super nice, so approachable. And I told him, I said, yeah, I've always wanted you to, you know, be the voice of Arbuckle Coffee, but Dad says we can't afford you. And he said, what's your dad's name? I said, Denny. And he said, well, we'll go have a chat with old Denny. <laughs> and that's where the friendship started. And about six months later, we ended up filming a promo. So I got to see him work from behind the scenes. They say the test of a true friend is someone that knows everything about you and they still want to hang out with you. They still want to be around you. And Dom was definitely one of those friends. I've known him almost 15 years and uh, it was great. I mean, he was, he was a true friend. And the thing that I would uh, want everyone to know is how gracious he was to all the fans. And uh, it's going to be tough. I'm really going to miss him as a friend. Thanks, Cookie. Arbuckle's the coffee that won the West. It's air roasted and cooled by the desert breeze. Now that's a good cup of coffee. So some of you may not know who Don Collier is. I would suggest going to imdb.com and looking up his name. His name is in the description field in the title of this video. Just look at the vast array of different jobs he's had over the span of his career. Learn a little bit about him. You'll find some clips of him online. Hey! That's the way you make your living. Oh, golly, Cole. It sure is good to see you. What sheriff had to hire you for a deputy? You're looking at him. The first time I met Don, um, I was invited to go to the Empire Ranch for their, their cowboy festival. And you guys were there, incidentally. Right. And Don was there. And I looked at him and I thought, God, I, I know that face from somewhere. I don't know where. And he stood up and he was, deep voice is like, hi there, I'm Don Collier. And I thought, I know who that is. Uh, and one of the guys that was next to me uh, said, well, he was the guy that was in High Chaparral, he played Sam Butler. Right. And I said, was he in the War Wagon? And he goes, yeah, yeah, he was in the War Wagon. Because I had just seen the War Wagon the night before, so. Boss, uh, you know the way they feel about each other. Lomax would probably ride all the way over here and kill him for nothing. Unless there's money in it, Lomax ain't gonna do nothing for nothing. One year I was at an event in, um, Old Tucson Studios. It was a gunfight competition. And um, Don was giving out the award for best actor and I got called up and he got to give me the award. Oh, that's and great. he slapped me on the back and he goes, there's my boy. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, uh, it was just, it was awesome. Just to, just to be honored by somebody of that, uh, of that caliber. So that's yeah. my Don Collier story. And he knew, he always knew how to connect with you. Always like John Wayne, looked you right in the eye. And he was always good at disarming everyone with his humor and made everybody feel comfortable. And I, I saw that hundreds of times. He always had that connection with everyone that just wanted a picture or just to say hi to him and introduce yeah. themselves. And he, he was good at that. And it was sincere. Did he ever tell you, or did you ever ask, what was his favorite role that he played? Well, the sentimental favorite would have been High Chaparral. Those were really good years for him. Bobby Hoy, who played his brother, ended up becoming really his closest friend in life. Mm -hmm. He's got great memories of uh, the other work that he did here in Tucson with Hubba Bubba. He, right. lo he loved that. 
Hubba Bubba lets you blow great big fat bubbles <laughs> that won't stick to your face. Big bubbles, no troubles. <laughs> you Bubba 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 Gum. At first, he was a little, I think there was a little bit of apprehension as to what he was getting into. He loved it. He had a great time cool. with it. He and Dub Taylor had fun. You know, oh, Dub yeah, Dub Taylor was right. He was in a lot of those. Dub Taylor. He was um, the gum fighter. Here comes the gum fighter. He's coming. There's going to be a gum fight. <laughs> as far as his sentimental favorite, it, it's definitely Sam Butler. Sam. <laughs> We're all worried about you. It's good. It's it's good to have friends. I remember Don at some of these events. He would tell stories of of the other people he worked with. Right. And um, one of the stories I remember that I talked with you about is the the Jack Elam story. Oh yeah. Can, yeah. can you relate that? Because my recollection may not be as good as yours. So Jack's daughter was going to the U of A. So Jack wanted to buy a. Uh, uh, a house in the Sam Hughes area. So somehow he and Don end up connecting. Well, for one thing, I was a whore holder at Madam Horse's, a horse holder at Madam Moore's house. You were a what? Horse holder. He's going down through these hallways and he's doing like this. Don's like, what are you doing? You know? And he's like, I gotta check out the halls. And, and his rationale on buying the house to Don was, well, when I come home and I've had too much to drink, the hallway can't be too wide because I got to prop myself up to get to the bedroom. It's <laughs> a great story. I just imagine if you're going to hang out with the likes of those guys, you have to be able to put back the whiskey. Uh, they're tougher than me. Don told yeah. a story about it was either War Wagon or the Undefeated, and everyone was out until five o'clock in the morning. Mm. And. Um, he said they'd be on the set, and he said the one thing that every makeup artist had to have was Visine, because they all had bloodshot eyes. Oh my goodness. And he said one actor was so out of it and so passed out, he had a fly going in his mouth. Fly landed in his mouth, and he never even flinched. You might have known it to be him. He's been acting kind of peculiar lately, John Henry. I mean, I can't believe two years ago, I'm in a steakhouse in Fredonia, Arizona, little town just hmm. south of Utah and I'm sitting in this giant booth Wilford Brimley wow. his wife Don Robert Carradine Don Wells who played Marianne on Gilligan's Island and me and, and I did not expect to go to that dinner and I, I always told Don, I said no you guys go do your thing he said no you're going and I it was great and we sat there and it was so funny we had such a nice time and everybody's just being themselves and they were having fun with the waitress to see who she recognized and of course the waitress she was probably our age and she immediately looked at don wells right. who looked great at marianne you know. and then she kind of went around and then she started figuring you're out the guy that. from cocoon yeah <laughs> then she starts putting it all together and of course she recognizes don's voice and then uh but Bobby Carradine was kind of wearing his hair long, so she wasn't too sure. But then when he started talking and he said, Revenge of the Nerds, she knew immediately. <laughs> they uh, grew up watching you, or they just have all of these, even though they don't know you, they have these good memories because of the work that you did. And Don really recognized that. That's a really important part of this whole, this whole recipe, is that there are younger people that watch this channel, and right now I'm sure they're IMDb I'm trying to figure out who Wilford Grimley is. And they may or may not have seen him in a movie, but they're gonna go and they're gonna learn. And they're gonna see a Western and they're gonna see Wilford Grimley in it. And they're gonna say, that's who they were talking about. No, sir. Your talk's just as cheap as your liquor. We've heard a lot about Don, which is great. Tell me a little bit more about his relationship with Arbuckle's Coffee. He was incredibly generous to us, and uh, I had written on my Facebook a few days after he passed that when you find favor with someone, I hope you feel worthy and enjoy all the fun times with friends and family and that person. And Don did so much for us. He, he was so resourceful and lending his talent to make that Arbuckle promo. 
And then he worked so hard on the audio book, I can't even put it into words uh, how grateful I am for all that he did. Josh, I, I can't tell you how much of a pleasure it's been having you on here today. Uh, I learned a whole lot about him, and I'm really glad that you could share all these stories and your relationship with him and his relationship with Arbuckles, which is, you know, my favorite coffee, as you know. So, um, uh, <laughs> not that I, I, I would, I'll give you the point back here. That's all right. Anyway. Uh, You've earned it. Have I earned it? Yeah. Awesome. Cool. I'll probably break it tomorrow. I don't mean to. But thank you so much. Appreciate you having me on. And as always, folks, please like, share, and subscribe. And, and we'll see you on down the trail. Really? Santee at the Arizona Ghost Riders here. I'm here with Josh. Let me try that again. We said, big bubbles, no try. That's right. right. He loved saying that. I bet every time he went to go take a bath, he said that too. Yeah, absolutely. Just, yeah. just laughed to himself. Big bubbles, no trouble. Big bubbles, no troubles. Give um, me my duck. Where's my duck? <laughs>